sleep regressions are the worst. <laughs> so today we're gonna talk all about what are the common sleep regressions and what to do at each of them. So hi, I'm Jensen Casey, certified uh, sleep consultant, certified postpartum doula, and mama of three. So I have been through my share of sleep regressions with my own children. So I'm gonna talk about this in like two different categories. The first one is the four month regression, which is kind of the biggest one that everybody talks about and all new parents are worried about. And then the other is I'm gonna kind of bucket into the same category because while they are valid and they do change our children's sleep, they are not as intense as the four month regression. So I have a whole series on the four month regression. So if you're looking for more info on that, go back to my channel. I have a whole playlist on four month regression, what it is, why it happens, what to do, all that good stuff. So make sure you check that out. But this uh, video is just gonna kind of touch on what it is and why it's different from all of the other ones. So the four month regression is literally a change to our child's brain. We come with let's basically say like two stages of sleep. We're awake or asleep as a newborn. Once that four month regression comes, we add in additional cycles of sleep that are not there when we we're first born. So your child has to figure out like in their brain how to add in these two extra cycles of sleep and that's gonna impact it because they have a lot deeper level of sleep and they have a lot lighter stage of sleep that they are not used to having. So that's why the four month regression comes. It hits, it hits hard for some, um, not so much for others, but that is kind of the explanation behind it and why it is so significant. And why I'm gonna lump the others into this other bucket together is because there's never a regression or your sleep is not going to be impacted like it is for that four month regression. We're not adding other sleep cycles. There's nothing like in your brain chemistry that's changing for those other regressions. It's more development related. So your child is probably learning to do something new when all of these regressions hit. So commonly we'll hear about uh, the 12 month regression, the 18 month regression, the two year regression, things like that. And if we really stop and think what is happening during those times, 12 month regression, your child is starting to walk. So oftentimes, once children are learning to pull to stand, they're starting to walk, um, that's gonna have an impact on their sleep, not because their brain chemistry is changing, but because they're trying to figure out and master a new skill. So you may notice that it takes them longer to get to sleep or they're more upset going to sleep because they're now pulling to stand in their crib, which they couldn't do before. Maybe they're cruising along the side of their crib. They're not necessarily upset, but they're cruising along the side of their crib um, trying to get some more practice in. Maybe you notice they wake up in the middle of the night and they're pulling their, they're pulled to stand and they're just yelling because they can't get back down. They haven't yet mastered that skill. So the 12 month regression is really around motor development and being able to move now more freely in their crib. And that practice is impacting their sleep, um, but not in a negative way. Once they are able to really hone in on those skills, get some more practice time during the day, then they're gonna pass it, they're gonna master it, it's not gonna be as much fun and they're not gonna wanna do it in sleep situations. They're very similar to all of the other ones that come up. 18 month regression, children are starting to get a little bit more language. Motorically, they're probably starting to move a little bit easier. Um, walking is not new anymore. They have mastered that, but they're starting to get faster. They're starting to use some first words. Um, so you may hear that they are awake in the middle of the night, my oldest son. I'll never forget, I woke up at like 2.30 in the morning once and he was just yelling, truck, truck, truck. And he had just learned the new word. Um, and he thought 2.30 a.m. was the perfect time to scream it over and over and over because that's what he was thinking about. That's what he was trying to figure out and master. So those um, skills, it may not seem an opportune time for us at 2.30 in the morning, but that's, he was between a sleep cycle. He was like, you know what? I have a little bit of a wake time. I'm here. I'm relaxed. Let's do it. So <laughs> that is kind of the reasoning why children choose this time. It's quiet, it's calm, there's not much else that they're doing. This is a perfect opportunity for me to use these new skills that I'm developing while I'm rested and happy and hanging out. And then once I'm done, I'll just go right back to sleep. Um, Two-year regression, that usually correlates with a big explosion of language. Children are now starting to put two words together. Um, so you may, again, hear some more practice overnight. They're really starting, um, 
to identify and just be more aware of like, where are you when you're not in the room, things like that. So that can have a really big impact on sleep, positive and negative, um, negatively because they're gonna be more willing to want to have you in the room. Um, they're not gonna want you to leave as easily. They're gonna be able to call out more for you. And that definitely as a parent is harder when you leave a six month old and maybe they're just crying, but when you leave a two year old and they're calling, mama, where are you? Mama, come back. Things like that, it definitely pulls up their heartstrings a little bit more than it did when they were younger. Um, and then kind of the last big one is right around two and a half, three, when children start to get more imagination, that's when we start to get that, I'm scared of the dark, I don't wanna be alone, can you lay with me, can you sit with me? Um, children are really, like their imagination blossoms, where before that jacket hanging in the closet, oh, eh, it's just there, I don't even really notice it, it's not something that, you know, I'm scared of. But now that jacket in the closet transforms and looks like a monster, it looks like something scary. So their imaginations are running wild and everything they see, they have a new interpretation for it. So at that point, that's when we really, like we start to introduce nightlights. We start to talk about what things are really using concrete language. Look, I'm gonna turn on the lights. You can see that this is a jacket hanging there. It's not a monster. Monsters are not real. Um, I do not, I've talked about this in other videos and I can tag them, but um, I'm not a huge fan of saying like, I'm gonna use monster spray or I'm gonna look under the bed for monsters because that is implying that they are real and they are something that you are getting rid of, which means that they can come back. <laughs> so we wanna to try to eliminate all of that. Um, so. Those are all the common regressions that come up really between the ages of newborn and four years old. If you are experiencing any of those sleep regressions right now, know that it is a phase. It will pass. We just have to give them all the opportunity to you either learn new skills during that four month regression or um, give them more time to be able to use the skills that they are developing for all of the other regressions. So a lot of floor time, a lot of practice time, um, a lot of introducing new language, get talking with them, depending on what regression they're going through, giving them the good quality time to be able to practice that during the day is gonna help eliminate the need for them to practice it overnight looking at their schedules, making sure their awake windows are appropriate for their age. All of those things are gonna aid in these regressions and helping you get over that hump the fastest that you can. So if you have questions about any specific regression that you are going through right now, just know one, you're gonna make it, but two, you can pop them in the comments and I will get back to you with a little plan of what to do to address it. See you later.